Hi, my name is Serene Ong and I'm a research fellow at the Centre for Biomedical Ethics at the National University of Singapore. In this video, we take a deeper look at the moral implications of genetic results and in particular, what it means for the family. This video will cover the patient's dilemma and the doctor's dilemma will be discussed in the third video. Ethical issues can arise because genetic information affects family members in ways other types of genetic, other types of information do not. To begin, we need to consider what medical information is, as well as the differentiating aspects of genetic information. Medical information is broadly understood as information about that individual's health. The European General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, defines data concerning health as personal data related to the physical or mental health of a natural person, including the provision of healthcare services, which reveal information about his or her health status. The Singapore Bioethics Advisory Committee defines genetic information as any information about the genetic makeup of an individual. This includes data from genetic tests and details about the individual's family history of genetic diseases. But how is genetic information different? Genetic information has three characteristics that differentiate it from other forms of medical data. It is sensitive, predictive, and shared. It is not to say that other types of medical information do not have any of these characteristics. For example, mental health information, sexually transmitted diseases, substance addiction, and even organ donation and transplantation are classified as sensitive medical information in Singapore. Epidemiological risk data can be considered predictive in a sense that it provides insights into the probability of certain health outcomes occurring within populations. However, it is genetic information that has all three characteristics, which can give rise to interesting moral challenges. Genetic information is sensitive because unexpected or potentially harmful details may be revealed. For instance, genetic information can uniquely identify individuals including family relationships, reveal, reveal paternity information, or uncover the presence of a heritable genetic disease. However, it is the predictive and shared nature of genetic information that is of interest here. It means that genetic test results have direct health implications for biological relatives. Early awareness of genetic risk can improve their health outcomes. Unlike other types of medical tests, genetic tests can also reveal information about genetically related family members, which raises the problem of privacy. Indeed, one of the strengths of genetic testing over other diagnosis methods lies in its predictive ability. In addition to diagnostic testing, which is used to confirm diagnosis in symptomatic in persons, genetic testing can also be used to identify the risk of a genetic condition in asymptomatic persons, that is, persons who show no signs of disease. Let's assume that a patient is diagnosed with a hereditary condition that carries, a severe, that carries severe health consequences, is medically actionable, and is highly penetrant. Early knowledge of the condition can improve the patient's health outcomes. However, the patient came to the doctor because they already showed symptoms. If we could identify other at-risk individuals who carry the variant before they develop symptoms, early detection, intervention, and management of the condition can potentially mitigate adverse outcomes and reduce complications in these affected individuals to a greater extent than symptomatic individuals. Given that the condition is hereditary, it would make sense to approach the patient's family members. Thus, when patients are diagnosed with a hereditary condition, their doctors will advise them to disclose their condition to at-risk family members. This practice, known as cascade screening or familial genetic testing, aims to identify individuals within the family who may also carry the variant. By informing at-risk family members, they can seek appropriate medical evaluation, genetic counselling and testing if desired. Additionally, 
uh, familial disclosure promotes awareness and understanding of the hereditary nature of certain diseases within the family, fostering support and solidarity among relatives facing similar health challenges. However, that the patient's genetic information can profoundly affect others raises some moral issues. Due to doctors' obligations to maintain patient confidentiality and the fact that genetic risk information originates from the patient's test results, the responsibility for disclosing genetic risk to family members typically rests with the patients themselves. When patients possess genetic risk information that could affect their relatives, they encounter a dilemma about whether to share this information. Making decisions about genetic risk disclosure involves managing information asymmetry and balancing various ethical considerations. On one hand, there is a moral imperative to share genetic risk information with at-risk family members, enabling them to make informed decisions about their health and potentially access preventive measures or early interventions. This is justified on the medical benefit of the information, and it is the main reason driving familial disclosure. Family members have a right to know information that could affect their well-being. Even if they do not get tested or screened right away, the information may prove valuable in the future if symptoms develop. Additionally, family members may appreciate the warning as a gesture of concern. Indeed, genetic information with its potential impact on the health of an entire family underscores the interconnectedness between individuals and emphasizes familial ties. These ties may create a special responsibility to the family, which includes a duty of care. On the other hand, patients may have legitimate concerns about respecting the autonomy and privacy of their family members, leading them to hesitate to disclose sensitive uh, genetic information without their explicit consent. Power structures and interpersonal relationships within families can influence how genetic risk information is shared or withheld. Cultural factors also contribute to the complexity of genetic risk disclosure. For example, perceptions of certain health conditions or stigmas surrounding genetic predispositions may impact how genetic risk information is perceived and shared within families. Patients may be concerned that family members react adversely to the genetic information, prompting them to withhold the information in an attempt to shield their relatives from distressing news. Patients may, feel inclined to dis may not feel inclined to disclose if the family members appears well. Financial concerns such as insurance coverage may hold patients back from disclosing, as family members may no longer truthfully claim ignorance of their genetic risk. Finally, it must be remembered that genetic inf risk information is probabilistic. The family member may not carry the variant and even if they do, they may not develop the condition. Patients, therefore, have to make a decision based on what they think is best for their family members and what they think the, the other would want. These inherent uncertainties surrounding genetic risk disclosure can lead to moral uncertainty, where patients may become unsure about what is the morally right decision or whether a morally correct decision exists at all. There is also the implicit presumption that it is acceptable for a patient to make decisions for the other, for their family members, which raises issues of autonomy and harm. By assuming the authority to make decisions on behalf of their relatives, patients may infringe upon the autonomy of their family members. Making decisions for family members without their input or consent may lead to unintended harm or adverse consequences, as discussed in a previous slide. These actions can have lasting consequences on family dynamics and communication, as relatives feel that their autonomy has been violated. If family members have a right to know about information impacting their health, this raises the issue of the right not to know. This notion entails that individuals should have the ability to decide whether they want to be informed about their genetic risk, including the right to decline such information. Respecting this preference and its resulting consequences is justified by the principles of respect for autonomy and privacy. While individuals may 
potentially benefit from knowing their genetic risk, they may also wish to shield themselves from unwanted harm, from which they perceive as potentially harmful. Unless family members have explicitly indicated their preferences, it is often unknowable whether family members want to know or how they would react, except in retrospect. Patients have to make a decision based on what they think is best for their family member and what they think that the other would want. Unfortunately, empirical studies have shown that individuals are often unable to accurately predict the preferences of their loved ones. Moreover, moreover, it can be hard to detangle what patients think their family members will want and what patients want for their family members. Indeed, simply asking the question, do you want to know your genetic risk, could inadvertently reveal the presence of a genetic risk. How can the patient gauge the preferences of the relative and obtain their consent without inadvertently revealing the genetic risk? In the absence of clarity regarding relatives' preferences, there is a proposed way forward. Relatives need rele relevant information to make sound decisions. Therefore, relatives ought to be informed of their genetic risk when the information may affect their choices, or at least be given the opportunity to be informed. The dilemma presented appears stark and simplistic, yet real-life scenarios often involve nuanced choices that defies simple categorization. First, that conditions are hereditary means relatives may not be completely unaware of their risk. Some conditions can be obvious in affected families. Cancer, for instance, is highly visible and has a grave impact not only on the patients, but their family as, at well, as well. In these situations, arguing whether relatives would be upset to know or if they have a right not to know may be moot. The disclosure of a patient's genetic test result essentially formalizes a medical diagnosis that aligns with the observed pattern of disease within the family. Second, it is crucial to recognize that disclosure isn't a one-time event where one individual imparts previously unknown information to the other, but rather a continuous process unfolding over time. Given that disclosure naturally follows the discovery of information, disclosure of genetic risk often takes place over time due to the diagnostic timeline. For instance, when a patient initially presents with high cholesterol, if there is an inkling or prior indication of hereditary implications, they may be referred to specialists like genetic services. Alternatively, it may then take some time before suspicions arise such as if the patient doesn't respond as anticipated to statins. During this period, the patient may have already informed certain family members of their condition. For example, I have high cholesterol. I'm being referred to a specialist. My specialist suggests a genetic test, and so on. These updates allow the patient to gauge their relative's receptiveness to further information about their health status. Third, disclosure is not a unilateral process but one that is co-generated in interactions and relations with family members. Disclosure occurs when the patient is transparent with their own illness and actions. Disclosure is continued by reciprocal actions from family members who indicate their interest and concern. For example, if a relative shows no interest in the patient's initial medical issues, the patient will probably not continue to update their relative. That lack of interest could be interpreted as a proxy for the relative's preference regarding their desire for information. Thank you.